All right, guys. It is Thursday, June tenth, two thousand and twenty-one, at one forty-three a.m. All right. Let's take a look at these stories. We have a ring of fire solar eclipse will light up the sky this Thursday. So we got the solar eclipse coming up in a couple of hours. It's one forty-three a.m. I believe by four a.m. in the morning here on the eastern coast, we'll have the beginning of the. Uh, solar eclipse happening. It says the moon will partially block the sun this Thursday to create a ring of fire solar eclipse. Some people in the northern hemisphere will be able to catch the first of the two solar eclipses this year on June 10th. A solar eclipse happens when the moon crosses between the sun and the earth, which blocks a portion of the sun's rays, according to NASA. This eclipse is a natural, an annual eclipse, meaning the moon is far away enough from the earth that it appears smaller than the sun. When the moon crosses past with a fiery star, it will look smaller than the sun, leaving room for a bright light to glow around the edges. This is called the Ring of Fire and will be visible to some people in Greenland, northern Russia, and Canada, Nessa said. Alright, so we have this Ring of Fire or um, the Ring of Fire solar eclipse going to be happening in a couple of hours. It reminds me of the song uh, of the Ring of Fire. Uh, by Johnny Cash. Pretty awesome song. Alright, next. We have America is receiving a second Statue of Liberty in time for July 4th. The replica will journey to New York City and remain in Washington, D.C. for the next 10 years. It says officials at France National Museum of Arts and Crafts sent a 9-foot replica of the Statue of Liberty to be displayed in the U.S. It will reside in New York City alongside the original from July 1st to the 5th. The Little Sister model will then spend the next 10 years in front of the home of the French ambassadors to the U.S. It says this upcoming 4th of July, when the U.S. celebrates its official birthday, the country will be receiving a gift from one of its oldest allies. France revealed on Wednesday that it will send the U.S. a second Statue of Liberty to be displayed on Ellis Island alongside the original from July 1st to July 5th. Nicknamed the original's Little Sister, a 9-foot bronze replica was loaned to the U.S. by France National Museum of Arts and Crafts, which um, was also helped load into a transportation container on Monday that was set to depart for America. So, uh, France's version was made in 2009 and has been on display in the CNAM Gardens since 2011. So we're getting a smaller Statue of Liberty being sent to New York in time for 4th of July. Alright, next. Alright, let's stick here. Okay, giant underwater landslide damages submarine cables and disrupts internet connection in Africa. A huge two-day underwater avalanche sent mud a thousand kilometers into the ocean and damaged submarine cables and disrupted internet connections between Nigeria and South Africa. It says a vast underwater avalanche sent mud and sand more than a thousand kilometers out into the ocean over the course of two days, rupturing submarine cables and disrupting internet traffic on Africa's western coast, scientists have revealed. The avalanche, the longest sediment flow ever recorded, traveled more than 1,100 kilometers from its source at the mouth of the Congo River along a deep ocean canyon, according to a new geological study. It took place in January 2020, but the data has only now just emerged. The slide may have gone unnoticed on land had the telecommunication cables not been broken, slowing data traffic between Nigeria and South Africa. Alright guys, so we're getting a lot of uh, disruption from internet, but this time it's by Mother Nature instead of people hacking. Alright, next. There are so many cicadas hatching in the mid-Atlantic that they're being picked up by weather radar. The year, the 17-year brood X cicadas are hatching in such high numbers that they're being picked up by the weather radar in Virginia. It says cicadas, not rain. There are so many cicadas hatching in Virginia, they're appearing in the weather radars as rain. Alright, it says this is not rain, not ground clutter, but... Uh, 
actually cicadas. So likely cicadas being picked up on the radar beam. Alright, so a lot of cicadas, a lot of cicadas. Let's see what else we got. Biden touches down in UK on first foreign trip as president, including summit with Putin. President Joe Biden on Wednesday embarked on his first overseas trip since taking office seeking to, the, to referendum uh, to reaffirm the United States standing on the world stage with familiar allies and portraying himself as a leader of the free world including in his first face to face meeting with Russian President Vladimir Putin. After touching down the United Kingdom New Press Pro Health Complete Protection After touching down uh, in the United Chin Kingdom kills 99% of plaque bacteria Sorry guys, it's getting advertisements here. Plus, it gives you 24-hour plaque protection and 100% mouth coverage. New Crest Pro Health Complete Protection from Crest, the number one toothpaste brand in America. Yeah, I don't know which advertisement is doing that. There's nothing that Joe and I don't enjoy more than spending time with our troops and their families wherever we go. All right, that was a little hijack for a second. I was like, what's happening? Uh, just an advertisement and a video. Anyways, after touching down the United Kingdom at Royal Air Force Base, uh, Maiden Hall Biden uh, delivered a fiery speech to American service members stationed there telling them he was going to Geneva to meet with Minister Putin to let him know what I want him to know. So that's pretty eerie. I don't know what exactly the two of them, Putin and Biden, are going to be talking about, but... He's over in Europe as of now, I think for eight days. All right, next. Cambridge-based Moderna working to have COVID-19 vaccines for children as young as five by early fall. So they're starting to get the COVID vaccine uh, trials, and pretty soon they're going to be getting vaccines for children as early uh, as fall for children as young as five years old. It says Moderna, which is based in Cambridge, says it will likely roll out a COVID-19 vaccine for children as young as five years old early this fall. Pfizer also says it plans to make coronavirus vaccines available for kids aged five to 11, just in time for the start of the new academic year. So by the time the fall season starts and school starts again, um, and we're coming out of summer, we possibly could be seeing new vaccines for children. And we've been having a lot of cicadas. It says, White House press charter plane delayed by cicadas. Cicadas took on Biden's press plane and they won. Watch out for the cicadas. Biden swats bug before departing on first overseas trip. All right. Next, let's take a look at Zero Hedge. It says, here we go again. JBS, Pain, Russian, and Hackers. 11 million in Bitcoin to resolve a ransomware attack. There was a moment of sheer hilarity between today when a congressional hearing and the CEO of the Colonial Pipeline, Joseph Blount, took the merely partial uh, episode of the Colonial Pipeline ransomware hack when as a reminder of a ragtag band of elite Russian hackers somehow managed to penetrate the company's cyber defenses, the bell was so stupid it left most of not all 4.4 million bitcoins it demanded in ransom in as easily traceable address for the FBI to track down and magically confiscated. Still unclear how the feds got the private key to access the hacker's digital wallet in days if not hours and elevated to a level of sheer ridiculous absurdity when they told congress that he didn't consult the fbi before paying the ransom this pardon the parlance of our times is complete bs either the ceo is lying or, or worse he is telling the truth and as some have speculated he the fbi and the hackers are all in on the so-called ransomware breach so who knows if this is accurate or not, but this is what this uh, person in Zero Hedge is uh, uh, making the story to be about. Apparently, the FBI supposedly managed to access the digital wallet and track down and get the uh, money back from the hackers who um, paid uh, JBS, uh, who JBS paid to uh, release, you know, the hacking computers, the hack computers. 
So who knows how accurate the hacking or, uh, you know, what involvement the FBI really has in acquiring that money. All right. I'll leave the link to the article so you guys can check it out. All right. Next, Mongolia reports fresh COVID outbreak despite high vaccination rates. All right, guys, this is an important story. Mongolia reports fresh COVID outbreak despite high vaccination rates so this is what our future could possibly be and there could be lockdowns again because despite what's happening if people are vaccinated people think oh you know we won't get covid we're vaccinated but people who are vaccinated can still get covid so the possibility of a new outbreak happening is totally possible Let's, let's, look at, let's look at the story. It says, For weeks now, Mongolia has been touted as an unexpected success story in the International Vaccination Project. The poor, mostly rural country lies between northeastern China and Russia's resource-rich east. The country, which struck deals with its neighbor to stock its vaccines coffers for months ago, drew attention due to its climbing international vaccination rate. But in recent days, Mongolia's COVID-19 rate has surged, raising questions about the efficacy of China's vaccines. So we have July 2021. Look how high the the sky the rate of COVID daily cases. Look how high it's getting. So this is a heads up, kind of like a canary, a canary, uh, a canary in the in the coal mine. Um, you know, giving you a warning, hey, this could possibly be in the future. It says more than half of Mongolia's population has been fully vaccinated. But despite this, the country reported 1,312 new cases of the coronavirus on Wednesday, as the country's total infection neared 70,000, with almost all of those recorded since January. New daily infections have risen more than 70% in the past two weeks, According to New York Times database, the landlocked nation has easily secured enough doses of the vaccine from Russia and China, and its case numbers rise. Uh, its vaccine has come under scrutiny because of a lack of transparency in its late-stage trial data. The vaccine faced many questions after the island nation uh, of the Sakilis, which uh, rallied heavily on Sinopharm to inoculate its population also saw a spike in cases. Although most people did not become seriously ill, inactivated vaccines like Sinovac and Sinopharm are not as effective against infection, but very effective against uh, severe disease. So they're saying that it could possibly be the vaccine itself. If the vaccine is not as effective, it could mean that uh, cases could start ramping up again. Who knows what's going to happen, but I, I, I found the article interesting enough to share it with you guys to give you a heads up what could possibly be in our future if something like this happens to us. It says, we reach our breaking point. Dozens of Baltimore businesses threaten not to pass taxes. It comes to no surprise to readers and dozen of Baltimore City business located in the Inner Harbor and stretch called Fellas Point are threatening the new city government. Uh, run by the mayor Brandon Scott will not be paying their taxes because they're fed up and frustrated with the outburst of violence. In a letter titled The City Leaders from Fells Point Business Leaders addressed to Mayor Brandon Scott Council President Nick Mosby uh, they said con uh, Commissioner Michael Harrison that the 37 restaurants and small business businesses that are threatening to stop paying city taxes and other fees until basic and essential municipal services are restored. What happens in Fellas Point, known for its hipster pubs and taverns, as well as delicious seafood from the Chesapeake Bay, is experiencing an ev overflow of violent crime from other troubled areas. So they're pretty much saying we're not going to be paying taxes, uh, all these businesses, we're not being, paying taxes as the businesses because all of this violence and it's, um, the help isn't being restored. So who knows what's going to happen there uh, if other towns could also possibly 
see what this town is doing and decide to do that for themselves uh, if they're in um, areas where a lot of violence is happening, like the riots that were happening, happening last year. All right, guys, that's it for this uh, video of news. Um, hit like and subscribe for more videos. And God bless you guys. See you guys next time. Stay safe out there.